Praise the Lord. I want to talk about some things this morning that are important. Again, this, this year is really, I really believe that the Lord has us talking a lot about um, respect and really the, the character that it takes to be able to build a body of Christ. There is a lot of stuff in the body of Christ that makes it very difficult sometimes to be able to grow and to be able to, to go forward because there just seems to always be this turmoil, always be a lack of character in somebody's life. And coming into the house of the Lord here, it's very difficult sometimes because somebody's getting up and using the restroom a hundred times and, and they're speaking out there and they're going back there and meeting in the hallway and talking and then other people are on their phones distracting other people. In the house of the Lord, um, we need to come to a place where we really understand what it's really all about. And so join me in prayer for this. Father, I pray that this will come across message this morning in a way that they'll receive it. So much love. Bless this time that we have together, Lord, and I pray that it would be very advantageous for the kingdom of God. You build the kingdom, Lord God, the way that you so choose. And we just want to follow that. We want to be obedient to it. We love you for it in Jesus' name. Amen. Jesus said to those who followed him, it is written, my house should be called the house of prayer. But, but, you've made it a den of thieves. For centuries, man has been making the house of God whatever they want to make it. Um, most of us that were raised in traditional churches, when you went in, things were quiet. You had your traditional hymns that were that were saying, and you stood up and you sat down, and it seemed a little bit regiment and. But you know what, there was something about that tradition that taught you at least a respect for where you were and what it was really all about. Our youth group that, that Kurt and I went to um, in the long haul, there were six or seven pastors that came out of that. And as I look back on it, I try to figure out why in that group, why did so many pastors come out of that one, one group? What, what was really there? And I think it was we were taught a respect for God. Even when we were sinners, Kurt went out and did the same thing I did. He went out and decided he was going to live for the world for a while and and um, didn't work for him either. Just like some of you guys graduating like Elisha, going out and doing what you want in the world, it just isn't going to work. And we turned around and had to run back to God. I did it pretty quick. I didn't want to be out there too long. To me, it didn't make a lot of sense. It just really didn't make sense to me. Common sense says you're failing miserable. So do something. So I turned to Christ. We, make, we want to make the church something that, um, that we can incorporate ourselves into that's comfortable. Sometimes it's the place of fellowship. We just come and we have fellowship. If you don't believe in something that one church teaches, then you just go to another church and we skip around until we actually find something that is comfortable for us. There's a lot of people, like I said, that, that will leave here. They, and their famous thing is, you know what? It just, it just seems like you're always talking about the sin that's in people's lives. You need to start talking about the love of God. Man, I talk about the love of God a lot. The love of God is... It always is. Without the love of God, we'd never be where we are. But the problem is, God is love. And in that love, there is a tremendous amount of respect and responsibility that comes with that. I love God. If I love him, the scripture says, I'll keep his commandments. So there's a keeping of something. There's a responsibility that I have. Um, I try to teach the truth like a lot of other people. When I do it, I'm not very good at it, to be honest. I'm not very good at being, um, I, I, I'm not good at beating around the bush. I'm not good at making it smooth. Okay, so sometimes I really upset people. Um, I think that if a person comes in here and you're committing adultery or 
sleeping around or doing something, you need to come in here with conviction. You need to leave with worse conviction. <laughs> More conviction. I don't want to leave you in the same place, and I don't want to be in the same place. I want to be changed. I want to do something that's going to build the kingdom of God. They were too busy. The day was upon them. The day's bread had to be made. The morning chores had to be done. There was too much to, to do through the day, so they had to get on it. God had entered the world as a baby. Yet, were summoned to chance upon the sheep stable on the outskirts of Bethlehem that morning, you'd find a scene, a stable which stunk. You had the stench of urine and dung and sheep, and it reeked all through the air. The ground was hard, the hay scarce, cobwebs clinging to the ceilings, mice scurrying around the dirt floor. It's a lowly place of birth, one of the lowliest that could have existed. Meanwhile, in the city, the merchants were unaware that God had even visited their planet. The innkeeper would never believe that he had just sent God into the cold, and the people would scoff at anyone who told him that the Messiah lay in the arms of a teenager on the outskirts of their village. They were all too busy to consider the possibility. Those who missed his majesty's arrival that night missed it not because of any evil acts or malice. They missed it because they simply were not looking for it. Little has changed in the last 2,000 years, has it? Max Licato wrote those words. For 2,000 years, we keep making fun of somebody that destroyed Jesus on the cross and how they couldn't figure that out, and, and yet nothing's really changed. When Jesus is in the house, we still all go about doing our business, and we miss his, just like Bethlehem did. I'm always out doing business. I'm always out doing something. I wonder if it's what the Lord wants me to do. We have so much arrogance and so much pride that we're going to pick our life. We're going to pick out what we're going to do. We're going to pick out how we're going to do it. I'll go to the church that I want to go to, go to the rehab I want to go to. If I can't make it in that one, I'm going to apply to UGM 24-7, Good Samaritan. If I can't make it in that, I'm going to try to go to the Walker Center. If I can't make it in that, I'm going to try to, you know what? Here's what you need. Jesus. Jesus puts character in your life. Character builds an integrity in your life to where you can live according to the way that God would have you to live because you have the Holy Spirit, a seed that remains in you that allows you to be who God wants you to be. First Chronicles chapter 16, starting in verse 23, I want to walk through something with you I'm, I think is going to help you in your walk with the Lord as far as dealing with respect. A lot of people don't have respect for what God is doing in the process of what God is doing in your life. You don't have respect for your $8 an hour job. You don't have respect for your 9, nor your 10, nor your 15. Why? It's because we're always looking ahead. I want the 20, and I want the 25, and I want the 30, and then I want the home, and I want the, I want, I want, I want. So we never respect what we have. We look at somebody else's family, we don't respect our own. We look at somebody's kids and somehow don't respect our own. Because somebody is always just a little bit better than what we can do. Or, and so we really don't have a lot of respect. In the world that we live in today, you're going to find that if we don't teach them respect in the home, and we have no respect for God so we can do that, it spreads out through the community really quick to where anymore people don't have respect for police officers, and police officers really don't have a respect for the city. It's like, how do we even do this? You can't do it without respect. It won't happen. You'll end up not liking the police officers. The police officers will end up not, end up not liking you. You will be arrested for your silliness, no matter what it is, and they really don't care. Why? Lack of respect. First Chronicles chapter 16 and 23 says, Sing unto the Lord all the earth, show forth from day to day his salvation. As a respect unto God for what he has done to us, gave us life, then we should sing of that salvation all the time. Just walk around talking about it. Sure, life's hard. 
Life is hard. So let's talk about his salvation in the middle of that life. You're going to go, you know what, man, that was the most horrible. I've been around a lot of older people that passed away. And man, my life was hard. Their life was hard. People that went through World War I, World War II, the Korean War, these particular, man, you talk to these guys, because most of them are dead now, but boy, when you could talk to them and did talk to them, their lives, they had to leave all of that that they experienced behind them. They went forward. They raised their families. They had Bible study with their families. They, they worked with their families. They ate with their families, and they never talked about all this. All they talked about was they're so thankful that God is God, and God was doing great and wonderful things. Why? Because I've experienced that. This is good. God is good. Having someone to come home to, wrap your arms around in love, having a little child hang on to your foot when you're walking to the house and you're dragging the little kid around the house. And sure, every now and then you may get irritated, but let me tell you something. Enjoy every second of it. I miss mine. I don't know what I would do if Josiah decided to grab my foot and I had to haul him around now. That would be a little different. Jaden on one side. And I miss it. I have a respect for my children. My children have a respect for me. My children have a respect for their mother. I respect their mother. Without respect, you'll never have a good family. Without respect to God, we'll never have a good church. There's so much drama, so much noise, so many people going to the restroom, so many people looking at their cell phones, so many people, yes, I see it, of course I see it. I'm up here looking at you. Yes, I see it all. To me, I'm quite a bit ADD. So it's easy for me because as soon as I see some people doing their thing, it's really easy for me just to, I'm going to a different subject. If I take my eyes off my notes, I'm gone, and you're blessed if I come back. <laughs> so I see all this stuff. I need to talk of the salvation of the Lord. That brings me all the way back to the plumb bob all the time. Declare his glory among the heathen. Where do we normally declare his glory? We try to come in here, we get together as a body of Christ, and we talk about how good God is with one another. I am not against that at all. I think we need to do that because you're still going through life. But let me tell you what's really cool. Try to tell the heathen. Declare the glory of the Lord to the heathen, to the sinners. They need to hear it. That's embarrassing, Pastor. No. Nope. You see, if you have a respect for the one that saved your life, then tell the others that need saved about the same person. It's interesting because when somebody's in prison or somebody's in jail and they know that they can come out, do you know how many calls and how many letters we get from people in jail that want to come into a program? How do they know? Because somebody else told them. Somebody else shared it with them. Why? Well, two reasons. One, it may save your life spiritually. Two, a lot of people think that they're going to get out and just get out of prison or jail. And we have a bad reputation for that. To me, I told an officer, I was on phone just on Friday. And he said, Pastor Tim, he said, your reputation, you have to remember why the officers have a hard time with you. Because we're arresting them and you're getting them out. We're arresting them and you're getting them out. So you bet they're going to think that. Because I said, I really need another appointment. I want, to, I want to sit in with all of the deputies and I want to tell them what we do and why we do it. Probably won't get the chance to do that. Why would I not get the chance to do that? Why would I not be able to do that? Well, because this is what you do. Do you know how many people are not on the street today because of the Lord Jesus Christ? And as long as there is no respect for the citizenship and what God is trying to do within the body of Christ from these people, then these people won't respect them and they won't respect them and you have problems. Somehow, there needs to be a mutual respect. And it has to start with respecting God first for who he is. For great is the Lord and greatly to be praised and also to be feared above all gods. Now we're going to try to explain what those gods are. It's a little g, obviously, but 
Those gods are going to be your idols. In the verse 26, it says, For all the gods of the people are idols. But the Lord made the heavens. I believe that we have so many distractions and devices that have become idols in our lives that it takes us away from his voice. It takes us away from his will in our life. Our minds focus on so many things, like food, people, jobs, home, gossip, politics, family. Thus, how do we come into his sanctuary with just the intention to worship him in the beauty of his holiness? Now, if I were to stop right there after I say that, I want you to understand it talks about the beauty of holiness all over Scripture. When we talk about the beauty of holiness, how different is that from looking out and just seeing the trees and the sky? And the, because it's literally saying that there is something that is so attractive, something that is so awesome, something that is so perfect in holiness. The Bible says it's beautiful. Absolutely beautiful. It's like a woman that is a woman of God is a beautiful woman. A man that is a man of God is a beautiful man. We don't like to be called beautiful, but we are. Some of us. Verse 27 says, Glory, which is magnificence or great beauty and honor, which means to regard with great respect, to see as a privilege. So it says, glory and honor are in his presence. When you're in his presence, you need to understand it's absolutely magnificent, and it is a tremendous privilege. You understand that? It's a privilege to be in the presence of the Lord. Some of you have been outside it. Isn't it a privilege to be in it? Three amens out of that one. The rest are in trouble. <laughs> Glory and honor in his presence. Strength and gladness are in his place. If you want strength and gladness, which is a feeling or state of well-being or contentment, you must be in his place, having communion with him. Oh, you're never going to be glad. You're never going to be content. You're never going to be happy. Everybody always builds your happiness maybe on where you live. I'm not going to live in IOP because I'm not happy there with a bunch of guys. Okay? Girls, I don't want to do the same because, boy, I'm sick and tired of being around a bunch of girls. Me too. <laughs> All my life, just estrogen everywhere. We were talking this morning. It never fails. I said, you're all so different. One of you is over here talking about this. At the same time, the other one must be thinking that everybody's listening to her because she's over talking about this, thinking that that one's listening to her. And then at the same time you're listening to her, somebody else is asking you a question. And you're just like, I give up. I just give up. You guys are nuts. I can only be content when I'm worshiping God. I can only feel content. I can only feel glad. I can only feel that well-being when I'm standing in the presence of the Lord. Mankind will never do that to you. Your husband will never do that to you. Your wives will never do that to you. you if that is your contentment, there's a problem there too. So I don't think that's why sometimes we're not content sometimes. Because the Lord's telling you, listen, I am your contentment. I gave you her. I gave you him. I am the one that you get your sustaining power from, not your spouse. We drain our families and our spouses because I want, I want, I need from you. Fix me dinner, make my bed, do this, do this. And we just drain them until one day they go, sayonara. And we look at them and we go, what's up? Why would you ever leave this? And the Lord's up there to answer your question because you left me. You left this. I gave you that. I gave you love. I gave you family. You walked away from this. You walked away from that. And you walked away from that. 
and you wonder why things happen in your life. Given to the Lord, you kindreds of the people. Given to the Lord glory and strength. Everything that you are, everything that you can be, turn it over to the Lord. Given to the Lord the glory due unto his name. Bring an offering and come before him. Worship the Lord in the beauty of holiness. The purpose is to bring an offering, a sacrificial act of worship that you and the Lord know what it is and it's beautiful when you do it. Some of you go, man, I can't give him. I don't have any money. The Lord doesn't need your money, believe it or not. The Lord can accomplish what he wants to accomplish with people that care. Yes, it takes, of course, want a building? It's going to take some money for a building. You want help with benevolence now and then? All of that. But let me tell you something. If we have God, all of these things are in place. Because he sustains us. He keeps us going. So in order to be in that place of holiness, he wants you to come in with an offering. In other words, let there be a little sacrifice on your part to be able to get to the place that you need to be. Nobody wants to work for that. Lord, you bring it on. Bring your Holy Spirit here. He says, well, I'm right there. Can you just go right there? No, Lord, I want you to bring that here. I want you to come where I am and you do something for me. And the Lord is going... Really? I gave my son. What did you give? I literally died on the cross for you. I bore the sins of the world and I'm not even of your world. I came down there to do it because I love you so much. I'm asking you, come to me where I am. Any type of a sacrifice of your praise. And then it says, when you come in, there's something about holiness again that is absolutely beautiful. But he wants you to make the sacrifice to get in the place of holiness. So what's it going to take for you? Maybe when somebody wants to walk up to you trying to, to lead you away, or I told our staff, I said, when somebody comes up to you in the middle of church service and says, hey, can I talk to you? Tell them no. Tell them no. I just want to come to church. I don't want to receive. Me too. It's hard sometimes because everybody wants to talk to you. Everybody wants to be around you. Everybody wants to ask you a question about the rehab and where they're supposed to go and all this or they want a phone number for somebody else. And you are here to receive from the Lord. Let him do it. Amen. Praise the Lord. This is a house of prayer. This isn't an information center for everybody to come in and find out what happened last week. If you want to know that, I could give you three or four ladies here that know most of it, and I'll give you their number. That was a joke. Some are going, that wasn't very funny. There's probably a couple men, too. And you know who you are. They're the Facebook pros. They know everything that's happening all the time. Pastor Tim, did you hear about this? Nope. I didn't. Don't really need to. Don't need to. God is still on the throne, no matter what they do. God is still on the throne. See, whenever they start writing all this stuff and going out there, then immediately it changes your mindset. If I don't know it, it doesn't change my mindset. Still praying for them, still love them, still want to love them, still want to help them. Fear before him all the earth. The world also shall be stable, that it be not moved. Know that he knows all. He holds the world in place. So be honest and be real. He's to be feared because he holds everything in place. I was watching YouTube. There's this one guy that had this little ball and the ball was sitting right here, and then he pulls it over here in thin air. There's nothing over it, nothing under it, nothing on the sides. And you're sitting there going, wow, how does he do that? This guy has a following because he can do this, and nobody can figure it out. And we're going, that guy's pretty cool. And then you have to stop and think, that's nothing. God does that to galaxies, millions and billions and billions of them, totally put right out there in the middle of nowhere, and he goes, stay. You do that. 
And yet, are we not blown away when some guy gets up here and does that? That's the beauty of holiness. See, God is holy. He does what He wants, when He wants, wherever He wants, however He wants. And you get to just stand back and go, that's cool. That's way cool. If you were to see the galaxy in the Milky Way in our solar system for what it is and how everything is sustained in this little equation of time and mass and how it sits right there in that little bowl and everything, you're looking at it going, how in the world God did it? Because He's cool. It's what He does. And there is a beauty of it when you could stand back and just look at it. The beauty of His holiness. And He wants you to worship in this place the beauty of holiness. When it gets outside of holiness, it loses its beauty. Amen. Are you hearing what I'm saying? Amen. It gets outside of holiness, and all of a sudden it looks dark. It's depressive. It's demanding. It's legalistic. It's, but when you're in your little pavilion with God, and it is beautiful, it's because it's holy. You've all felt it. You know what it is to have those little Holy Ghost goosebumps. Where all of a sudden you're going down the road, you're listening to this particular song, you got your little ear things in, and you listen to this song, and all of a sudden you stop, and you find out, man, I'm getting a little teary-eyed, and things are starting to happen, and, and then you start praying, and something comes on you, and it's like, what is this? Anybody ever experienced something like that? That is the beauty of holiness. That's God's holiness hitting us. And it's beautiful. Nothing more beautiful. Let me give you an example. When I got married, I'll never forget, I'm standing up front. My dad is right behind me. He was my best man. Died 10 years ago, but he was my best man. And I'm right up here, and the door's in the back in California. The door's open, and here comes Cindy. That's the last I remember. I saw Cindy, and my head just went, <sighs> I was gone, man. I was doing everything I could do not to get all teary-eyed in front of the church. And then I heard my dad behind me, sniffing. My dad was six foot five. He was a big man. He didn't cry, and he's sniffing. He said it's because he didn't think I'd be able to find a good-looking woman. <laughs> so she's coming through the back door, and she started coming down. And I remember going, that's beautiful. That's absolutely beautiful. And what was beautiful about it is it was righteous and it was holy and God was in her and it was done right. God was good. He was so good. And he still does that. And then it hit me. I'll be. That's what God is doing. You see, one day it's going to be all of us. It sounds strange to us guys, but it's going to be us and we're going to be coming through that door right there and this is the beauty of his holiness. And all of a sudden, you're going to see Christ, the husband, the bride enters the back. And here we are entering the back, and we can see our husband up there. And we're like going, oh, oh wow, what do I do with this? That's the beauty of holiness. It's so holy that you can't even look upon it. It's so holy that you want to put your face right down into the ground. It's so holy that even though you, you don't really want to look upon it because it's so holy that you'll crawl on your face just to be at his feet. That is the beauty of holiness while you're totally twitterpated and full of goosebumps. I don't know what I would do. I don't know what I would do. I told the congregation in the last service, I said, you know, for me, I always dream, envision, being in heaven and having this great big line of people in front of me and looking to the front of the line just to try to, to see what's going on. It, the holiness has got to be something. And I'm, we fear God while we're here. It's a natural tendency, by the way. It's okay to fear God. You better fear God. And it's very natural to fear God because why? He's God. You're not. And so because of this moment, at the time that you die, Okay, to be absent from the body is to be present with the Lord, or not. And so we're standing right here, and I can see this long line. I told the last congregation, I could see John Padula, about three people from God. He's up in the front, and all these people, by the way, very few enter. So you got all these other people going over here, and it's like, oh, no. No, these people didn't. And, and every now and then, somebody goes off onto this side, and they're going in. I'm going, Yes! Yeah, that's, praise God. Okay? Then, but I'm waiting because John's three people away. So then two people away, and then John gets up there. 
And then he says, thou good and faithful servant. And I'm way back in this line going, phew, okay. <laughs> and John makes it. I know I'm in. Praise the Lord. <laughs> You can say, John, I know, I'm right there, man. We tend to judge ourselves with people, but there is this place of holiness that you just can't wait. Oh, come on, come on, come on. I get excited about it. I really do. I get excited about it for you. When I see you doing well, when Alyssa's doing well, I get excited for you. When Dee Dee uh, did well, oh, yes, yes, I get excited for you. I'm your best cheerleader, believe it or not, okay? I'll have pom-poms right there in heaven for you, okay? When they say, thou good and faithful servant, I'm going, yeah, <laughs> just like that, because I'm going to get excited. Let the heavens be glad and let the earth rejoice and let men say among the nations, the Lord reigneth and the sea roar and the fullness thereof. Let the fields rejoice and all that is therein. Then shall the trees of the woods sing out of the presence of the Lord because he cometh to judge the earth. Even the creation of God is going to sing to him at the time of his judgment. They can't wait for the new heaven and the new earth. There's something. Any life is of God. So if you see that tree, if you see the grass, if you see whatever you see that has any life to it, you know that that baby is from God, created by God, and held in, in the palm of his hand. They're rejoicing in it while we're missing it. He's coming back a judge. They're rejoicing at him coming back a judge. And with us, we're missing it. Just like Bethlehem missed, who showed up, we're going to miss it too if we don't pay attention. Oh, give thanks unto the Lord, for he is good. And his mercy will endure forever. He loves you just enough to keep the rest of us alive until you get saved. So hurry and get saved so he can come back. Wouldn't it be really cool if you were the last one to be saved? The Lord's just been waiting on you? Man, I'd be going, come on, Deborah, step it up. It's time to. <laughs> just kidding. And listen to what he says. Oh, say ye, save us. O God of our salvation, and gather us together and deliver us from the heathen that we may give thanks to thy holy name and glory in thy praise. This is a place that is good for you and God to come together and be real. Just be real. Walk up to God and say, God, I really don't know why I think what I think. I don't know why I do what I do. But I do them, and I think them. And so I need to be honest with you, and I need to ask you for your help. Lord says, okay, this is what I want you to do. He's going to give you some good advice. And then you always go and get more advice. You want a second opinion. The Lord says, okay, here's what I want you to do. I want you to give up those cigarettes then. I can't. I want you to give up that man then. He's causing you to... St I can't. Okay. Okay. He said, well, Lord, I, I asked you to give me the strength. I, I need your help. He said, I just tried to help you. If I wanted to create robots, I would have done that. I didn't. I created you with the will of your own. Do you love me? Yeah? Then follow me. Come to me, all ye that are heavy laden. I'll give you rest. But you understand, he didn't say, I'll come to you, because 2,000 years ago, he did. Now he says to you, come to me. You make the walk. You make the run. You leave your place and come to me. This is where the beauty of holiness is. And this is where I want you to come. We have an example that's given in Scripture. I want you to pay attention to this in 1 Kings chapter 19. We have this example of Elijah being a little paranoid because some woman, Jezebel, is going after his life. So he goes out wanting to hear from God, puts himself under a juniper tree. He goes in Beersheba and drops off his servant, and he goes another day's journey out into the desert, and he sits himself under this tree. Oh, God, I just want to die. What am I going to do? And he wanted to hear from the Lord. And if you read on down, 
The Lord gave him some instruction. The angel of the Lord came in verse 7. The angel of the Lord came again for the second time. He did this twice, and he touched him, and he said, Arise and eat, because the journey is going to be great for thee. Okay. That's the second time. The first time he said, Arise and eat, the journey is going to be, going to be tough on you. Second time, rise and eat. It's going to be tough. Went out for a long time. And he arose and did eat and drink. And he took 40 days and he went up unto Herob in the Mount of God. He came into a cave and he lodged there. And behold, the word of the Lord came unto him and said unto him, What are you doing here, <laughs> Elijah? It's like, Really? You fed me once, you fed me twice, told me I was going to need the nutrition to get out here. I get out here 40 days later, now you look at me and say, what are you doing here? I thought I was out here because you led me out here. And now you're asking me what I'm doing here. And he cried and said, I've been very jealous. In other words, there's a reason why I have you out here. And now you've had 40 days to think about it. What are you doing out here with me? And guess what he did? He tried his own heart. He said, okay, what's my real problem? He said, I've been very jealous for the Lord God of hosts, for the children of Israel have forsaken the covenant, thrown down thine altars. They slain the prophets with the sword, and I, even I, only am left, and they seek my life to take it away. I'm your only guy. As if you don't know this, Lord. Obviously, he wasn't the only guy, but he sure thought he was. He's feeling sorry for himself a little bit. And not only am I the only guy left after they totally deserted you, but I got a mad woman that has a lot of power trying to kill me. And that's enough to hurt. He said, go forth and stand upon the mount before the Lord. And behold, the Lord passed by. I love this. The Lord passed by. And a great and strong wind rent the mountains. Now, we're going to get into just a little bit that when God wants to do something, he can speak however he wants. But you need to know how he wants to speak to you. He passed by, and immediately, a wind. You okay there, Bonnie? <laughs> I thought... She's being raptured, man. She's out of here. <laughs> so this wind comes by, and boom, the mountains are rent. The rocks literally explode out of these mountains, and they crumble. That's pretty impressive, don't you think? Broken pieces of the rocks before the Lord, but the Lord was not in that wind. And after the wind, there was an earthquake. I won't do that one. <laughs> after the wind, there was an earthquake. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after the earthquake, there was even fire. But the Lord was not in the fire. And after the fire, here's where it is. A still small voice. All he was doing with the other three is getting his attention. Boom. That should make sense to most of you. What he's done in your life, all those little earthquakes, all those little tsunamis in your life, and all those great losses and all that great turmoil, all he's trying to do is get your attention so you can come in and worship him in the beauty of his holiness. Because he's God. Not because he wants to bless you, not because he's given you this and given you this and given you that. He just is God, and he is worthy of all praise and honor and glory. Amen? The Lord's presence can cause many things like mountains being split, broken in pieces, a wind that has the power of a hurricane, but his small voice is what's meaningful. And that's the thing that nobody wants to pay attention to. They didn't know him in his own town. They didn't know when God showed up. We don't know when God shows up. We're waiting on somebody to tell us. We'll go to other people. And it's time that you go before God. Spend your time with God. Spend your time in the Word. Spend your time the joy, in the joy of the Lord because that's going to be your strength. We're here in this sanctuary here to learn truth in the beauty of His holiness. 
And the better thing to do is to be still, to be reverent, to be quiet, respectful, so as to hear from God and get His instruction for our life. Our track record is not good. You look at your track record, ask yourself, do I experience life in the beauty of His holiness? What's my track record? Do I find that I am able to hear the still small voice of the Lord and be directed with it? Even in the middle of tribulation time, they're instructed to worship the Lord because He's going to come back as a judge. In Revelation 14, it says, And I saw, in verse 6, I saw another angel fly in the midst of heaven, having the everlasting gospel to preach unto them that dwell on the earth and to every nation and kindred and tongue and people, saying with a loud voice, Fear God and give glory to Him, for the hour of judgment has come. And worship Him that made heaven and earth and the sea and the fountains of waters. And he said, This is why we worship Him. It's beautiful. It's ominous. It's absolutely incredible. Here's how you're going to know this. See, in the, in the beginning, if you were there with Him, and there was absolutely nothing, in the beginning, God created the heaven and the earth, and the earth was without form and void, and darkness was upon the face of the deep. It didn't have anything there, and the Spirit of God moved upon the face of the water. God said, let there be light. And there was light. Boom! If you were there and you saw it, you would change everything that you think of God. Everything. Because then you'd be going around, and you'd be going, you know what? I know you really love God, and I know you think you love God, but if I were you, in order to have a better love of God, you first need to fear God, because when you fear God, then you'll have understanding and wisdom. It's the fear of God that brings these on your life, knowing what he can do. He blew this baby up into an incredible, beautiful thing. If you were there, you'd be telling everybody about it. You'd be going, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man, oh, man. Wow. This is big. Fear God. He's got the power to do that. He's got the power to stop me if he wants. Why is it that we fight it all the time? Why is it that we do that? But we do all the time. They say, fear God and give him glory. The hour of his judgment has come. In verse 8, and there followed another angel saying, now, the opposite extreme here is these other people that thought that they were the ones with the power. They were the ones that should be worshipped. Babylon has fallen, has fallen that great city because she made all nations drink of the wine of the wrath of her fornication. She pulled people away from God, whether it be the commerce world, whether it be our culture. That is going to be destroyed. There are two eternal cities that are mentioned in Scripture. One is the holy city of the New Jerusalem. The other is not a holy city, and it's called Babylon. It said the torment, the smoke of her torment, rises up forever and ever. So there are two cities. One is wicked, and one belongs to God. Which one do you want to be involved in? The one that glorifies God, where it says that your glory is like this terrible crystal that just like, talking about the church, this incredible thing that just shines shined out for what he represented. Because the New Jerusalem, the city, is the bride of Christ. You are those little crystals. You are the beauty of the city. And what makes up the city is the worship inside of the beauty of holiness that Christ literally has a circumference around. He holds it all right there. That's why there's no need of any light. It says that God and the Lamb are the light thereof. There's no need of the sun anymore, it even says. Sun, pfft. the sun, it says, is ashamed of his light. Now that's right. Because God is in the house. When God's in the house, any other light that you would have would be ashamed. Proverbs 19 and 27 says, Seize my son to hear the instruction that causes to err from the words of knowledge. In other words, stop listening to fools and people with their own agenda. Go after what God said. But very few people will do that. The word here is mentioned over 500 times in Scripture trying to get you to understand that you need to hear what the Spirit is saying to the church. You need to hear the instruction of the Lord. You need to be happy in the instruction of the Lord. You need to love the precepts of God. But over 500 times it uses the word to hear. In Revelation 1, 3, starting that book, it says, Blessed is he that readeth 
And they that hear the words of this prophecy and keep those things which are written therein, for the time is at hand. If we want to be blessed, we must provide an atmosphere to hear what God is saying. That means be still and know that He is God. Be still, not lazy. There's a difference. Be still. Reverence in the house of the Lord, in our own house, in our community and such, is for a purpose. It is to hear proper instruction, to gain proper order, to gain proper respect and proper etiquette, so as to learn as much as we can and be all that we can be in what God has called us to do. And without respect, you'll never get there without respect for God and what God has put in your life. Do you really need to go to the restroom so many times? Do we really need to be on our phones while the Word of God is being read? Is what we have to say more important than what the Lord has to say? Is your lunch more important than the hungry and the thirsty and after righteousness? What agenda do you have that is interrupting God's purpose for your life? The Bible says, and Jesus went into the temple of God and cast out all them that sold and bought in the temple and overthrew the tables of the money changers and the seats of them that sold the doves. That's in Matthew 20 and verse 12. They never saw Jesus do anything like that. He was nice. He was gentle. He was a miracle worker. They'd come to know this very loving, gentle guy that was in their town. It was a complete surprise, but it, it frustrated him when he witnessed that his father's house was being turned into a place of commerce. It's a house of prayer. Keep it a house of prayer. Whatever else you do in here, take your fellowship, love your fellowship, but leave it a house of prayer. Worship him in here in the beauty of his holiness. The people were taking something sacred and something holy and reducing it to something evil and something that is not of God. We do it in our homes. We do it in these vessels, the most important vessel outside of you. See this building right here? This is just a building. But this is the tabernacle that God decided to live in. And are we keeping it up? Do you make sure that this is okay for him? Do you even think about it? Lord, just asking you to think about it. Think about it. What do you watch? What do you hear? Where you're going? What are you involved in? This is where God resides. Do you get that? Ponder today on that. This is where God resides. Or not. When we enter into the house of worship, We should do so with a sense of reverence and awe of who God is and that He has given man the opportunity to honor Him. Jaden, if you'll come up. We should feel a privilege, you guys, that God has counted us worthy to be able to even bring us to this place to serve Him. We should count it a privilege to be able to come in here with one another and be able to just say, Lord, Wow, this is cool. We have the liberty to do it. We have the freedom to do it. And I'm going to do it while I have that freedom. We should never enter the house of the Lord because somebody else expected us to. Even though I believe that our children need to be, because we have instructed them. But as an adult, I believe that we need to come because we want to hear from God. I had a wife tell me a while back, the only reason my husband ever comes because I ask him to all the time. I bug him to all the time. If your wife is having to bug you to come to church, God have mercy since you're supposed to be the leader. If you're having to bug your wife all the time, Lord have mercy. There's, for some odd reason, the church we always see as a building. It's not the building. It's not this building. It's this building. You don't play church. This isn't just a playing house here. You don't play with God. You're a holy vessel set aside for the work of God. A holy vessel. It's a holy spirit that's within you. 
with the Holy Bible that guides you. Let's bow our heads, if you would. I know that there are people here that have had a really tough time of even knowing who God is. It's hard to respect a God where in a world that we live in today has little respect for people, period. Some of us didn't have the mothers and the fathers, the grandparents or the family relationships to be able to encourage that respect. It just wasn't there. And so it's hard for you to gain that. It's hard for you to see that. I want you right now to find your place of honesty with God. Let this be your little secret pavilion right now. And I want you to ask Him, Lord, I am willing to make the travel. If it's 40 days, I'm willing to go those 40 days. I'm willing to go where you would have me to go so I can find you and worship you in the beauty of your holiness. It's not just because it feels good. It's not because it has good music, Lord. It's not because the sermon was good. I worship you because I found that place where the holiness of God was so perfect and so majestic and beautiful that I could not help but do that. That's the place you need to find. No church will suffice you because you'll look for a church that will justify what you're doing. So no church out there is going to be perfect. It's only your place with God. It's your place, that little secret place with God where you're going to find that. If you want that this morning, and you want the Spirit of a living God to come inside of you and allow you somehow to, to pull you into that place, we're going to open these altars for you to come to find Him in just the beauty of holiness, not even through somebody else, not through a building of a church, or, but between you and God and your honesty with God, saying, Lord, I want to find you. I want to be totally overwhelmed and twitterpated by your holiness. And if that's you this morning, I would welcome you to come to these altars. I would welcome you to stand up here or kneel up here and say, oh God, please, I need to find that place of respect. Without our respect for God, we'll never have respect from our children or our marriages or anything. Without our respect for God, our community is always going to fail. We've got to get respect for the house of the Lord, and the house of the Lord is you. And you've got to respect it. And it has to be honored. If anybody wants to pray for some of the ones that are down here, I would ask, please, come and pray with them if you would. And then I'm going to pray with the congregation. And I want you to take this serious. When we leave this place, that's where the mission field starts. And you need to take it serious. This world is going to die and go to hell unless someone somehow gets in front of these people and gives them the gospel. Let's bow our heads. Father, I thank you for the ones that are here this morning. I thank you for their lives, Lord God. You brought them to this place. I pray, Lord God, that there would be such an awesome respect for what you're doing. The sanctification which is taking place, the souls that are being saved this morning, we rejoice. With all the angels in heaven, we honestly rejoice. This is so cool. I pray, Lord, that their respect for you, Lord God, and what you've done in their life, I pray, Lord God, that they'll first spend their time, Lord God, just thanking you that you showed up in their life when you didn't have to. They've walked away from you. They have cursed you. They have wanted to run the other direction. They've even led people down that direction, and you still loved them. And anybody that's going to do that, you've got my respect, and you've got my attention. So thank you, Lord, that you're here. Thank you, Lord, that you're dealing with everyone that is in this place today. When we leave today, I pray that we go with the power of God in our lives to be able to touch other lives. Help us. Help us to build respect. 
Help us to build a place, a tabernacle, a building, a church where the Holy Spirit can reign and rule so that people can see the wondrous works of God. May you get the glory and all the honor in this wonderful day. Get the people to the baptism today, Lord God, and I pray that this day would totally belong to you. The people that are helping at the thrift store, Lord God, they're you're putting a bunch of stuff into the second part as we're expanding. I pray, Lord God, that you'll keep them safe as they haul that stuff around. And Lord, thy will be done in our life today. We give you the glory and all honor and praise. And we ask it in the name of Jesus. And everyone said, Amen. God bless you guys. Have a Christ-filled day. See you at the baptism. The ones that are up here, continue to pray. Nobody's hurrying you up.